Hello again. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures and turn and read along with me in your authorized version of the scriptures, word for word, verse by verse of what we will be looking at and considering today. Read along with me. Be a Berean. Search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. Read along with me, because sometimes the mouth goes quicker than the brain. Okay? This is going to be a very, I don't know how long this is going to take, but this is going to be a very in your kind of to the point thing. Okay. Philippians chapter three, verses one on to verse three. Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord to write the same things to you. To me, indeed, is not grievous, but for you it is safe. Beware of dogs. Beware of evil workers. Beware of the concision. For we are the circumcision which worship God in the Spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. We have no confidence in ourselves, but in the Lord. Okay? But in the Lord. This video is being made... Um, as a response unto a dear brother that, you know, there are some of you saints out there who we're all called to do something. doesn't matter who or what you are in the body of Christ. Okay. We're all called to do something. Okay. And some of you know, but you're not doing it. But there are some of you also who need a little bit extra encouragement, okay? And that's what this is about, encouragement. Judges chapter 6. Judges chapter 6. Judges chapter 6, verses 36 on to verse 40. Judges chapter 6, verses 36 on to verse 40. Gideon, an indifferent dispensation. Gideon wanted to make sure that he was going the right way, that he was, you know, you sure you want me to do this, in a different dispensation. There are so many brethren out there who have no confidence in the flesh, but yet are resistant and reluctant to go as the Lord may have them to. Okay? I understand that. Oh, in the name of our Lord God, Jesus Christ, I understand that. So here we go. Judges chapter 6, verses 36 on to verse 40. And Gideon said unto God, If thou wilt save Israel by mine hand, as thou hast said, behold, I will put a fleece of wool in the floor. And if the dew be on the fleece only, and it be dry upon all the earth beside, then shall I know that thou wilt save Israel by mine hand, as thou hast said. Gideon was nervous. He's like, oh, Lord, are you sure? And remember, as it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 22, the Jews, the Hebrews require a sign. The Jews require a sign. The Greeks seek after wisdom. Okay? We walk by faith, not by sight today. Okay? you got to remember that. But the Jews require a sign. And Gideon here is like, Lord, you sure you want me to do this? this is, I can't do this. Are you sure? And it was so. For he rose up early on the morrow and thrust the fleece together and wringed the dew out of the fleece, a bowl full of water. And Gideon said unto God, Let not thine anger be hot against me, and I will speak but this once. Echoing what Abraham said to the Lord when he was um, interceding for Lot, trying to whittle the Lord down to say, Well, Lot's in Sodom. Don't destroy it because he's there. Okay, he, the Lord wouldn't let him get that far. <laughs> but the same thing. Okay, it's like, Lord, I don't want to make a mistake. I'm as scared to mess it up.
son. I get it. I get it. And Gideon said unto God, Let not thine anger be hot, uh, be hot against me, and I will speak but this once. Let me prove, I pray thee, but this once with the fleece. Let it now be dry only upon the fleece, and upon all the ground let there be dew. God did so that night, for it was dry upon the fleece only, and there was dew on all the ground. Now, the Jews require a sign. The Greeks seek after wisdom. Okay? you got to remember that. But the point is, the Lord had called Gideon. And Gideon didn't want to go in his own strength. He wanted to make sure. But the Lord, and remember, the Lord doesn't force anyone to do anything. But he has a special talent to make it to where, okay, you don't have to do it. But you're pretty much only left with one other option or you're just going to go belly up and the rest of your life is going to mean nothing. You don't have to do it. But I'm going to make it very difficult for you to say no, boy. John, and see, this is, this is the thing. John 7, verses 16 on to verse 18. John 7, verses 16 on to verse 18. Jesus answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. If any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. He that speaketh of himself speaketh his own glory. But he that seeketh his glory that sent him, the same is true. And no unrighteousness is in him. And how many, it's the Jeremiah chapter 23 thing. These, I have not sent these prophets, but they ran. They want to be the big shot. They want to be the fancy schmancy preacher, right? But us saints who are called to do something, whatever it is, we're reluctant. We're a snail while the false run. We're a snail. Okay? We have no confidence in ourselves. See, because we're broken of ourselves. The false is, well, I can do that. So they run. We, saints, I don't want to do that. I don't want to mess it up. Galatians chapter 1. Galatians chapter 1. Galatians chapter 1, verses, one uh, verses 10 on to verse 12. For do I now persuade men or God, or do I seek to please men? For if I yet pleased men, I should not be the servant of Christ. You know, keep to themselves teachers having itching ears. Speak unto us smooth things, prophesy to see, because you gotta you gotta make a living, right? But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Paul was not forced into ministry. None of us are the ministry of reconciliation. We are ambassadors for Christ, yes, but God doesn't force anybody to do anything. He can sure make it difficult for you to say no. Oh, yeah. But he don't force anything on you. Go with me on a little quick train ride here. But before we do that, go to 1 Kings chapter 20. And I wanna, I'm going to tell you a very quick little thing. Very quick little thing. Long, a couple of years ago, about four years ago. Um, hold on. When the Lord first saved me, fifteen years, over fifteen years ago, 
I was for 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 some reason immediately understood the centrality of the Jew, the Hebrew. Okay, that was something that I always, I mean, from the get-go, I knew, I, I understood that. I understood that it was to the Jew first and also to the Greek. I understood that. I understood that, you know, that salvation has come onto the Jew and that we were grafted in. I under, for, from the very beginning, since the Lord saved me, I knew, I, that was something I knew right away. Some of the very first people that the Lord ever had me witness onto were Hebrews, were Jews, okay? I understood that. That was something that I got immediately, okay? Immediately, all right? I did, okay? That was just one of those things. I got it, okay? The centrality of the Jew, the Hebrew, okay? All right? A lot of, and this is where the uh, replacement theology devils come around because they're jealous. They want to replace uh, replacement theology. Remember that. Um, beg your pardon. All right. They want to, you know, replace the Jew and whatnot. But I, I knew that from the get-go, from the very moment that the Lord saved me, pretty much. And can, going on in my walk, I always was like, you know, the Holocaust. Holocaust is, you know, you witness onto a Jew, a Hebraic person. Um, that that's a that's a great conversation to bring up. And at the time, many years ago, when looking up the Holocaust, um, seeing Christians address it, but fall short of it, and a lot of them too would well, it was the failure of Christianity. And see, too, you got to keep in mind, a lot of uh, saved Jews, saved Hebrews, abhor the term Christian. Why? Because of the crusaders with the crosses on their tunics. Hitler was a Catholic, not an atheist. Okay? All right? But there were some... Uh, of these Christians that did somewhat decent, but kind of, you know, it's like, there's a lot you could say, a lot you can tie in about the Holocaust, right? And in uh, my younger days in the faith, I did come across one Hebrew, uh, one Jew, a heretic, who believed himself to be an Old Testament prophet. Yeah, he was messed up, but charismatic. He was doctrinally all over the place. He was a mess. He did things on the Holocaust, which were very good. But then again, he had a, he had a spirit of whoredom. How so? He would use the scriptures, but then again, he would use this Bible and this Bible. And he had that hordic, whoredom spirit where he didn't have a perfect standard, okay? But he, he... He did a decent, decent tying in, you know, scripturally, at least, of the Holocaust. Okay? But then again, like I said, the guy was a rank heretic. He, he really believed he was an Old Testament prophet. He really did. Okay? He really did. I have my doubts whether or not that man is in heaven. If I get up there, we get up there. And he's there, like like I say with Luther, like I say with Ruckman. Get up there, and I see Ruckman. Hey Lord, can I have that humble pie? Can hey, can can you give me that 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 crow and season it with a whole lot of whatever? Come on, I'll eat that up right away, and I'll get my big old fat belly. Okay. But there again, like I said, he, he touched on it, but he used a lot of philosophy. Okay? He used a lot of philosophy and man's wisdom. Falling short. And I always was saying, and I would take notes here and there, and I was always saying, you know, to the Lord, it's like, you know, Lord, why... You should you should put it on uh, one of these guys' hearts 
to do an in-depth scriptural look at the Holocaust. I said that for a number of years. First Kings chapter 20, verses 7 and verse 14. Ahab, who was the husband of Jezebel. Note the context. 7 and verse 14. Then the king of Israel called all the elders. This is when, uh, uh, what was it, um, Ben-Hadad was messing with Israel. Ahab was a wicked king. Okay, he was, uh, you know, manipulated by his wife, uh, Jezebel, type of the Roman Catholic Church. Then the king of Israel called all the elders of the land and said, Mark, I pray you, and see how this man seeketh mischief. For he sent unto me for my wives, and for my children, and for my silver, and for my gold, and I denied him not. And all the elders and all the people said unto him, Hearken not unto him, nor consent. Wherefore he said unto the messengers of Ben-Hadad, Tell my lord the king, all that thou didst send for to thy servant, at the first I will do, but this thing I may not do. And the messengers departed and brought him word again. Ben had is like, give me your gold and silver. It's like, okay. Ahab's like, okay, here, take it. Then he comes back, give me your wives and kids. And Ahab, wicked, pansy, <laughs> patsy, excuse me, patsy boy. Ahab is like, I ain't giving you my wife and kids. Interesting about how people will want to take a lot away from you until it reaches a point where it's like, I ain't giving you that. You think about that one, huh? Okay. And Ben Hadad sent unto him again and said, The gods do so unto me, and more also, if the dust of Samaria shall suffice for handfuls of all the people that follow me. See, Ben Hadad was looking for a fight. It wouldn't have mattered. Hmm. And the king of Israel answered and said, Tell him, Let not him that girdeth on his harness boast himself as he that putteth it, putteth it off. Don't get so full of yourself there, tough guy. Basically. And it came to pass when Ben Hadad heard this message, as he was drinking, he and the kings in his pavilions, that he said unto his servants, Set yourselves in array. And they set themselves in array against the city. So war was coming. War was coming. Dire situation. And behold, there came a prophet unto Ahab, king of Israel, saying, Thus saith the Lord, Hast thou seen all this great multitude? Behold, I will deliver it into thine hand this day, and thou shalt know that I am the Lord. Hmm. Meaning the Lord is going to take care of things. And Ahab said, By whom? And he said, Thus saith the Lord, Even by the young men of the princes of the provinces. Then he said, who shall order the battle? Then he answered, Thou. <laughs> Get the point? Who's going to do this? You know, somebody ought to do this. Uh... Esther, Esther chapter 4, Esther chapter 4, Esther chapter 4, verses 10 under verse 14. And Esther spake unto Hatach, and gave him commandment unto Mordecai. All the king's servants and the people of the king's provinces do know 
that whosoever, whether man or woman, shall come unto the king into the inner court, who is not called, there is one law of his to be to put him to death, except such to whom the king shall hold out the golden scepter, that he may live. But I have not been called to come in unto the king these thirty days. And they told the word they told to Mordecai Esther's words. And Mordecai commanded to, es to, to answer Esther, Think not within with thyself, excuse me, that thou shalt escape in the king's house more than all the Jews. Things are coming. Dangers there. And along comes an opportunity given to you on a silver platter. Who's going to do this? Who shall I send? Verse 14. For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed, and who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Well, I, I, I'm not called. I'm not called to do what you do. I'm not called. First Corinthians chapter 12. Okay, we're going to go a little quick here, so come on. Pause the video if you got to. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, <laughs> well, if I get there, verses 27 on to verse 31. Now, ye are the body of Christ, members in particular, and God hath set some in the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly, teachers, After that, miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, governments, diversities of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Are all workers of miracles? Have all the gifts of healings? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? But covet earnestly the best gifts for the edification of the church. We're going to look at that. And yet, shew I unto you a more excellent way. I'm not called to do what you do. Hmm. Ephesians chapter 4. I'm a man of my word, son. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 7 on to verse 16. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. We're all in the ministry of reconciliation. It doesn't matter who you are. Well, I'm not called to do that. I'm not called to do this. Okay. That does not absolve you from being an ambassador for Christ. Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now he that ascended, now he, now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. And he gave some apostles, and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some, te uh, and some pastors, and teachers. Why? Make your pardon. For the perfecting of the saints. For the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. What are we reading to? Verse 16. Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man. Not sinless, but perfect in heart and relation towards the Lord. Okay? Unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro 
and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slights of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive, but speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. I'm not called to do that. I'm not called to do this. Uh, Romans chapter 10, <laughs> which these... People like they never they, who uh, uh, talk against Romans chapter ten is like they don't address verse fourteen. Romans ten, verse fourteen out of verse seventeen. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher, specifically a preacher? Hmm? Okay, he's talking about a preacher, but I'll keep reading. And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of preach, peace, and bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Now that's about people who preach speak and stuff like that but not everybody is called to that are they what if the lord gives you something that he intends and wants to use you for like i said for years i was like lord you ought to have someone do a video or something about the holocaust Here's an idea. How about you? Well, I'm not called to do this. It doesn't matter. You're all in the ministry of reconciliation. You might not be called. You might never be called to do this. But what if the Lord opens up a doorway? So you, I hate this word. Someone give me a better one. What if you have an opportunity to be a mentor unto a young babe in Christ? What if the Lord opens a door that through your self-sacrifice someone will witness the love of Christ in you? What if? And that's not relegated to just doing this or even passing out tracts even. Okay. You, you see, some a lot. Okay, a lot of the brethren, because we're broken, we have no confidence in the flesh. And when the Lord opens up a door for us or orchestrates something, what do we do as brethren? Right? I don't want to do that. The, this is I've. This is, I'm, I'm here, I'm here with you. Let's do this. I don't want to mess it up, Lord. I'm with you. Lord, see, that's a saint. A saint crawls. Why? Because we have no confidence in the flesh. Because we have been broken. Okay? Because we have been broken and have no confidence in this. Okay? That's why. When the false, it's all about this, the flesh. They run. We, <laughs> Lord, no, the Lord virtually took everything away from me. It's like, Brad, you don't have to do this. But if you don't, you're not going to go anywhere. You and your wife will be home. Unless you do. You don't have to. 
But see, the Lord, for example, myself, he took everything away. Like that. And like I said, I was always like, Lord, you know, you, know, you, ought, to, you ought to have somebody do something on the Holocaust. Well, who will lead you? Who will do this? You. Well, I, I'm weak. I can't. I, 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 I can't do it. I, I don't, I'm not as brave as you, Brad. I, I can't do this. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Verse 7 on verse 12. Do ye look on things after the outward appearance? If any man trusts to himself that he is Christ's, let him of himself think this again, that, a, that as he is Christ's, even so are we Christ's. Are we in the right place? Yes, we are. For though I should boast somewhat more of our authority, which the Lord hath given us for edification and not for destruction, I should not be ashamed. You got these people who come around, they're not saved, who say, well, exposing false prophets is a great ministry. That's part of this, yes, but that's not the main focus. And when it is the main focus, it's contrary with Scripture because we are to be what first? Edifying our brethren. And when you got some putts whose all they do is point the finger, okay, that's a good sign that they ain't of us, okay? That I may not seem as if I would terrify you by letters. For his letters say they are weighty and powerful. But his bodily presence is weak and his speech contemptible. Paul, remember, he, he was beat to smithereens. Okay? He was beat to smithereens. He had, an, he had a formal education. Okay? All right? But he didn't trust in those things. Okay? Let such an one think this, that. Uh, let such a one think this, that, such as we are in word by letters when we are absent, such will we be also indeed when we are present. What you see here is who you will meet out there. There are a lot of people, especially here on this kind of platform, who act one way, I bet you if you meet them in person or show up suddenly on their doorstep unannounced, I bet you you would see a totally different person. I bet you. That's a shame. For we dare not make ourselves of the number or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves, but they measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves are not wise. They're not wise. Like it says in John, Peter's like, and Lord, well, what is this guy going to do? And the Lord says to uh, Peter, if I, if I want that guy to be around here until I come, what's that to you? You follow me. You go where I send you. You don't worry about what I got him doing. You worry about what I want you to do. Okay? But Brad, Brad, I'm a, but, but, but. Okay, uh, chapter 11, verses 23 and verse 30. 2 Corinthians 11, chapter 23 and verse 30. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak of as a fool. Okay? I am more. And labor is more abundant, and stripes above measure, and prisons more frequent, and deaths oft of the Jews. Five times received I forty stripes, save one. Thrice was I beaten with rods, once was I stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck. A night and a day I have been in the deep, in journeyings often, in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils by mine own countrymen. In perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, 
in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils amongst false brethren, Christians. <laughs> in weariness and painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst and fastings often, in cold and nakedness. Beside those things that are without, I just lost my place, that which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the churches. Not the phallus houses, but the bodies of believers. Who is weak? And I am not weak. Who is offended? And I burn not. If you look, look at that pedigree, if you will. All that Paul went through. You think he did that out of his own power, huh? There are these uh, atheist people who actually believe that. Yeah, he did that on his own. No way. Verse 30. If I must needs glory, I will glory of the things which concern mine infirmities. And of course, chapter 12, verses 9 and 10. Okay? Chapter 12, verses 9 and 10. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. Why? Because the power proceedeth not of himself, but of God. Hence the difference. A false prophet runs. Look at me. Look at me. A saint in any capacity. Lord, I, I just don't want to make, get, get, let, let, let someone else do it. Lord, I, 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 I can't do this. I can't do that. I, can, I can't speak. Lord, I can't. Can't speak, huh? <laughs> any of you have watched me come for a while, you know I have problems. <laughs> you know I have problems with that. Don't you? Exodus chapter 4, like we did in the last video. Exodus chapter 4, verses 10 and 12. Okay? And Moses said unto the Lord, O Lord, O my Lord, I'm not eloquent, neither heretofore, nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant. But I am slow of speech and of a slow tongue. And the Lord said unto him, uh, Who hath made man's mouth? Or who maketh the dumb, that means not being able to speak, or deaf, or see, or the seen, or the blind, have not I the Lord? Now therefore go. Go. And I will be with thy mouth, and teach thee what thou shalt say. Jeremiah chapter 1. Now, the interesting thing about Jeremiah, Jeremiah, people can argue that he was forced. He could have said no at any time. It would have been quite costly to him. Yes, it would have. Uh, yes, it would have. But again, the Lord didn't force him. Okay, here runs in the problem of these Excuse me, wicked Calvinists, okay? But Jeremiah chapter 1, 4 under verse 10. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. And I said, Ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. But the Lord said unto him, Say not, I am a child. For, our, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. 
See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. Again, this is a good example. Jeremiah was not forced. Find that in the text. But the Lord made it really difficult for him to say no. Jer God doesn't force anybody. You bring up about Pharaoh. Pharaoh's heart was already hardened. The Lord's like, okay, let, let him along. Pharaoh already had a hardened heart against the Lord. The Lord just let him along, okay? It's not that ridiculous Calvinistic nonsense, okay? Watch out for that, okay? He could have said no. It would have been quite costly and devastating to him if he did, okay? And there's a point in Jeremiah where Jeremiah does say no. And that burning, okay? But the Lord made it awfully hard for him to say no. While we're here in Jeremiah 1, verse 17 on verse 19. Thou therefore, get ready, gird up thy loins and arise, and speak unto them all that I command thee. Be not dismayed at their faces, lest I confound thee before them. Huh? Wait, wait. What do you mean? We'll, we'll touch on that a little later. Okay? For behold, I have made thee this day a defense city, and an iron pillar, and brazen walls against the whole land, against the kings of Judah, against the princes thereof, against the priests thereof, and against the people of the land, and they shall fight against thee. But they shall not prevail against thee, for I am with thee, saith the Lord, to deliver thee. Oh, Satan will win a battle. But the battle belongs unto the Lord. The Lord wins. 2 Corinthians 11. 2 Corinthians 11. You see that? 2 Corinthians 11. 6 now. 6 on the verse 15. 2 Corinthians 11. Verses 6 on the verse 15. But though I be rude in speech, not in knowledge, though you may be rude in speech, but not in knowledge. Yeah. Though I be rude in speech, yet not in knowledge, but we have been thoroughly made manifest among you in all things. If I committed an offense in abasing myself, that ye might be exalted because I have preached to you the gospel of God freely, I robbed other churches, taking wages of them to do you service. And when I was present with you and wanted, I was chargeable to no man. For that which was lacking to me, the brethren which came from Macedonia supplied. And in all things I have kept myself from being burdensome unto you. And so will I keep myself. And what are we reading to? Verse 15. As the truth of Christ is in me, no man shall stop me of this boasting in the regions of Achaia. Wherefore, because I love you not, God knoweth. But what I do, that I will do, that I may cut off occasion from them which desire occasion that wherein they glory, they may be found even as we. This is talking about those again, like in Jeremiah chapter 23, the false, who want to be the big shot, who want to be the diatrophies, okay? Who want to be, hey, hey, here I am, look at me. <laughs> okay? Where the saint, it's like, we crawl. Why? Because we have no confidence in ourselves. We want to make sure we're we're scared, right? Oh, I get it, brother. Oh, I get it. Sooner or later, though, you're gonna go. You ought to go, because he has this magnificent way of stripping everything away to where it's like, okay, 
You don't have to do what I tell you, but I'm going to tell you. You're either going to do what I tell you, or if you refuse it, and your life's going to go down the toilet. He's not going to force you. But he has that magnificent way. Wherefore, because I love you not, God knoweth. But what I will do, that I will do, that I may cut off occasion from them which desire occasion, that wherein they glory, they may be found even as we. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ, as we already touched about in first uh, in Galatians chapter 1. They speak smooth things. They itch people's ears. They run to the forefront. They want to be the big shot. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Okay? And uh, that's what we're going to read to on that. Okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Brad, I, I, okay, I get it. I get it, but I, 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 Brad, come on, I can't do anything. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 27 on to verse 29. God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. And baits things of the world. And things which are despised hath God chosen. Yea, and things which are not. To bring to naught things that are, that no flesh should glory in his, in his presence. Second Timothy chapter 4. Second Timothy chapter 4, verses 16 on to verse 18. Brad, I'm, I'm alone. I, I, I can't speak. I can't, I can't do what you do. I'm afraid. I'm a, I, I can't do this. I can't do this. I can't do this. I understand. Believe me, I do. Believe me. I do. Second uh, Timothy chapter 4, verses 16 on to verse 18. My first answer, no man stood with me, but all men forsook me. I pray, God, that it may not be laid to their charge. Notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me and strengthened me, that by me the preaching might be fully known and that all the Gentiles might hear, and I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom, to whom be glory forever and ever You might not be called to this. You know, Christianity has distorted and cheapened. You know, they said, God has a plan for your life. One, one moment, I want to prove a point. You know, Christianity, they have, God has a plan for And when you and I as saints hear that, we're like, ah. God does have a plan for you. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. You're lost. What would God want? What does God want? What does God want? 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 4. Who will have all men to be saved and come unto the knowledge of the truth. God wants all men to be saved. Not everyone is going to be saved because the Lord has a specific way that he will save you. You have to go his way, broken, contrite, and in fear of him, calling upon his name. Okay? 
And when the Lord saves you, yes, the Lord does have a plan for your life to be his ambassador. But see, Christianity, when they say, well, God has a plan for your life, you know what they're uh, talking about? They're talking about this. This is rent money, by the way. This is what they're talking about. This is what they're putting it back to. Your greed, your covetousness. When they say, God has a plan for your life. Meaning, what they mean is like, God wants to bless you and love you and give you the best. Uh, naked and hungry? Are they, are they uh, ministers of Christ? I am more. Okay? Okay? Yes, God does have a plan for you to serve him as he sees fit. Okay? Yes, he does. Yes, he does. And I understand the fear. I understand the reservation. You don't want to mess it up. What if I stumble and bumble? Have you watched some of these videos? What if I make a mistake? You make a mistake! You be a man. You admit it. And let people learn from that mistake instead of trying to skirt it and hide it. Man up to it. Yeah, I made a mistake. Yeah, I messed up. Yeah. Own it. Repent of it. Give it over. Let, it, let the blood cleanse you and go on. Okay? I know some of you are afraid of men. I know. Believe me, I know. I know. I know. <laughs> but Isaiah 51, again, brethren, Isaiah 51, 12 and 13, okay? I, even I am he that comforteth you. Who art thou that thou shouldest be afraid of a man that shall die? And of the Son of Man, which shall be made as the grass. And forget us the Lord thy Maker, that hath stretched forth the heavens, and laid the foundations of the earth, and hath feared continually every day, because of the fury of the oppressor, as if he were already, as if he were ready to destroy. And where is the fury of the oppressor? get it but you know remember brethren our Lord Jesus Christ who is God our Father he is Lord of Lord King of Kings he sets up these situations he is the one who orchestrates it you already knew you already knew. And, and that doesn't matter who you are. You already know. Some of you are afraid. Some of you make excuses. Or reasons. Haggai. Haggai chapter 2. Haggai chapter 2. Book of the Prophecy of Haggai, chapter 2, verses 4 and 5. Yet now be strong, O Zerubbabel, saith the Lord, and be strong, O Joshua, son of Josedek, the high priest, and be strong, all ye people of the land, saith the Lord, and work. For I am with you, saith the Lord of hosts. According to the word I've covenanted with you when ye came out of Egypt. Okay. Our instruction in righteousness when he saved you. Okay. So my spirit remaineth among you, sealed until the day of redemption. Fear ye not. I just don't want to mess up. 
I want to make sure it's of the Lord. Good. Amen. Do so. Go ahead and be like Gideon. Don't, don't tempt the Lord, of course, but search the scriptures. Make sure that you already know. Don't be afraid. You might not do this. There are some out there who I wish would. I would be behind you every step of the way. And I would encourage other brethren to support you. I would. You might not be, you might like me like, well, Brad, I, I'm not called to do that. Fine. But you've been called to something. Zechariah chapter 4. Zechariah chapter 4. Verses 6 on to verse 7. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Who art thou, O great mountain? Great mountain. You gotta remember in scripture, the Lord will use geographic kind of things as an example of man. You know, the waters in Revelation 17, 15, you know, we are as grass, that kind of thing, and also mountains, how they tremble and stuff like that, okay? It's all depending on context, all right? Who art thou, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel? Uh, who art thou, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel, thou shalt become a plain. And he shall bring forth the headstone thereof with shoutings, crying, Grace. Grace unto it. Grace is black and white, unmerited favor. Romans 15. Romans 15, verses 1 and verse 3. We then that are strong, Brad, I'm not. You gotta remember, in your weakness is his strength. Your strength is not of your of you, obviously, right? It's the Lord. We then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak. And not to please ourselves. And let's let's be honest. You're kind of pleasing yourself when you're giving some legitimate reasons of why you're not doing anything at all for the Lord. This that that doesn't apply for everybody, of course not. But for some of you. There are some of you out there. But there are also some of you who have been given kind of like silver platters like dude, dude that's uh that one's being handed to you don't be afraid you'll mess up every once in a while you will it happens you know you you're not a perfect creature like that never mind about that devil okay you're not a perfect creature you make mistakes we make mistakes i make mistakes Don't be afraid. Be weak so that the Lord can be strong in you. Okay? Don't be afraid. Go. You got people who pray for you? Reach out for prayer. And if it turns out to be bunk, bust, hey, whatever the situation is, look at me, look at me. Whatever the situation is, whatever it is, they are going to remember that testimony. They are going to remember that. You mark my words. It's like our brother from uh, out northeast, you know. Them kids, they ain't never going to forget his testimony. Ain't never going to forget it. Brother, dear brother from Ohio who died in 
way overdue on talking to. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You know, in your weakest moments, when the Lord breaks through you, they ain't going to forget that testimony. We then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. Let every one of us please his neighbor for his good to edification. For even Christ pleased not himself, but as it is written, the reproaches of them that, are, that reproach thee are fallen on me. And, and then again, you, you, you do, you do got to remember. You do got to remember. Okay? In 2 Corinthians chapter 8, 2 Corinthians chapter 8, okay? 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 7 on to verse 15. Therefore, as ye abound in everything, in faith and utterance and knowledge and in all diligence and in your love to us, see that ye abound in this grace also. I speak not by a commandment, but by occasion of the forwardness of others, and to prove your sincerity, to prove the sincerity of your love. For ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that ye through his poverty might be rich. And the charismatic devils take that out and twist it. And keep reading, okay? And herein I give my advice. For this is expedient for you, who have begun before not only to do, but also to be forward, forward a year ago. Now therefore, perform the doing of it. Come on, let's go. Okay. That as there was a readiness to will, so there may be a performance also out of that which you have. Peter did step out of the boat to go to Jesus, remember? Hey, he saw the wind boisterous. He took his eyes away. He started to sink. He didn't plummet. He started to sink. Lord! Okay, so why'd you doubt? Come on. Now I'll therefore perform the doing of it. That as there was a readiness to will, so there may be a performance also out of that which ye have. For if there be first a willing mind, it is accepted according to that a man hath, and not according to that he hath not. Go in the strength that the Lord gives you. Okay? There are, I, there are things I'm not even going to attempt because the Lord hath, hasn't called me to do that. So I'm not going to take it upon myself to do something that but I know the Lord hasn't called me to do. Likewise. You know, it's like, well, Brad, I haven't been called to do that. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. Good. Then do what he's called you to do. But I, you know, I really do. Seriously, which, you know, the ministry of presence, just being there with someone, but every once in a while, even the most dastardly, even the most stubborn, every once in a while, you need a hug, don't you? There are some brethren that I just wish I, I could, like, come here, come here, give them a hug. It's like, it's okay, it's okay, don't worry. I, I get it, I get it, I do. It's okay, it's okay to be afraid. It's okay to doubt yourself. It's okay to be, you know, am I going to say the right thing? It's okay. See, that, that's the beauty of it. We have no confidence in this. The fake, the false, they do. You're right in line, son. You're right in line with the way it's supposed to be for us, brother. Keep in mind, verse 13, For I mean not that other men be eased, 
ye be burdened. Verse 14. And what are we reading to? Verse 15. But by an equality. That now at this time your abundance may be a supply for their want. And their abundance also may be a supply for your want that there may be equality. It's a two-way street. It's a two-way street. You will be, the Lord will use you to supply, to build up, to nourish, to encourage, to rebuke, to correct, to admonish. But the Lord will use you, can use you, in that situation, to mentor, to teach. Absolutely. Absolutely. But it's a two-way street. And you doing it, you get assurance, uh, affirmation. When you see someone who you love and the light comes on and you can see it and they get it. When you've spent time with someone in the scriptures and you can, you can see the fruit of, of, you know, of being with them, of the Lord, you and the Lord, you know, the Lord using you, excuse me. But, you know, when you get to see that, it's so strengthening. There, you know, so many times, it's like last week. Whew, it's like, Lord, I'm done with this. I can't, I can't do this. It's like, I can't. See, that's the thing. I have no confidence in me, as you have no confidence in you, whoever you are, saint. We need all the hands we can get on deck. Not of ourselves, but as the Lord willeth. And a way of equality. You give on to them. And they give on to you. However, however that dynamic is going to work in the given situation. Okay? As it is written, He that had gathered much had nothing over. And he that had gathered little had no lack. In Galatians chapter 6, Galatians chapter 6, verses 1 and verse 6. Also got to remember. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such an one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. And I know that there are some of you out there who are aware of this and know what this is talking about and are, yeah. What does this mean? Don't get too full of yourself, tough guy. I have seen some people who um, just like to rough, you know, puff themselves up. It's like, look at me. I have the, you know, I've, you know, I'll never forget uh, some guy who I don't even think is saved said to me, um, I feel like Paul with all the people I've led to Christ. I bet you do. Yeah, I bet you do, don't you? Yeah. Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if a man think himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. We're dirt. This power comes not of us, but of the Lord. Well, the false, like I said, you know, they, they're, you know, hold your place. I've mentioned this. Jeremiah 23. Let's see it. Let's see it. Jeremiah 23. Jeremiah 23. Verses 21 and 22. Ouch. I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. They go to the front. Okay? I have not spoken to, spoken to them, yet they prophesied. Think of their own nonsensical head. But if they had stood in my counsel and had caused my people to hear my words... Then they should have turned them away from the evil, turned them from, excuse me, their evil way and from the evil of their doings. We're nothing. We're dirt. It's you're supposed to be like reluctant. 
Okay, you, you could say about, well, Isaiah, here I am, send me, send me, send me, okay? You can, you can make that, that's a valid argument. But see, you got to remember, the power does not come from us. It comes from the Lord. And when the Lord deems you ready, I'm ready, Lord, because you have deemed me so. Okay, let's go. But see, again, we have no faith in us. And the less faith you have in yourself, dear brother, I say the better you are, the better off you are, because then it's not of you. It's of the Lord. Our confidence is not in us. It's in God, who raiseth the dead, remember? I said, I get that some of you are scared. I get it. Don't be. I get that some of you are afraid of messing up and misspeaking with your tongue. You've seen a couple of my videos, right? <laughs> that the Lord, that the Lord has given, excuse me, right? Okay. Like I said, there are some of you out there that I think the Lord would use mightily. I would be behind every I would be behind you 110%. And I would I would say for the brethren, support this brother. Support him. He needs it. He needs encouragement. He needs the body of Christ behind him. If it's not doing this, whatever it is, it's like pray for this brother. He needs us. He needs support. He needs help. But let every man prove his own work. And then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. What does that mean? You did call me. This is what you want me to do. I am at the point now in my life. This is at least today, at least now. And I don't know how much longer I got. <laughs> Last week, man. But I'm confident, I know, I am doing what the Lord wants me to do. I have no doubt. I have no doubt. For every man shall bear his own burden. Let him that is taught in the word Communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. You see how it works? You hear from one, you got it from that one, and then you give it on to another, kind of like a chain, you see? That's how it works. Philippians chapter 2. Then we'll be done. I had done a video previous to this, but um, I lost my temper in it, so it's not going to be uploaded. I'll probably do that either tomorrow or Wednesday. <laughs> I uh, was getting uh, irate thinking about this. I'm not even going to go there. I'll get all irate again, but because I told a brother I had to, and I did. I, I recorded it, but there was a part in there where I really lost my temper, and I'm not going to upload that one. So, <laughs> so but anyway. Uh, Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 on to verse 4. If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship in the capital S spirit, if any bowels and mercies, fulfill ye my joy that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife and vain glory. But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Kind of, what is that? Um, 
where it says that's in Romans 12. Roll, hold your place, Romans 12, where it says, I condescend not to, I don't want to mess that up. See? See how that works? <clears throat> uh, Romans 12, verses 15 and 16. Rejoice with them that do rejoice, and weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind let each, let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. And you go ahead and keep reading on your own. I get it. I get it. I, I do. I really, I really, really do. I really do. And that's that's noble. That's beautiful. That you, that some of you is like, well, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. I, I I get it. I get it. I get. I dude. I understand. But. You know, while you're walking around, it's like somebody ought to do something about this. Or who's who who who's going to lead this guy? Or or who's going to speak up? That's going to be it for this video. There'll be links in the description box where we talk about this more in depth. Um, like I said, I had done a previous video, which I'm not going to upload because uh, I lost my temper in that video. And um, it, I, I no, I'm not going to upload it. it uh, uh, do it, uh, do it, redo it. <laughs> but I'm um, going to get this uploaded and there'll be links for you in the description box. Thank you for watching this if you do. Pray that the Lord send his laborers out into the harvest. We'll see you in the next video.